Do you have hard little white bumps on your skin? They might be something called milia. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you what they are and how to get rid of them. I'm Dr. Sam Ellis, and I'm a board certified dermatologist in Northern California, here to help you understand your skin and find products that work for you. If that sounds good, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So what are milia? These are tiny little white bumps on the skin, typically one to three millimeters, so super small. And they're made up of dead skin cells or keratin, which is the protein that makes up skin. And it's when it gets trapped right below the skin's surface, forming a small little cyst. If you have a single spot, it's called a milium. And if you have multiple spots, then they are called milia. So you wouldn't say I have a milia. You would say I have a milia, just a technical point. These spots can technically show up anywhere on the body, but they are most commonly seen on the face, especially on the cheeks and around the eye. And we'll get to this later in the video, but they can also occur at sites of trauma. So if you scrape your elbow or you have some type of burn, you can also get milia within that. We don't fully understand what causes milia and why some people are more more prone to them than others. But when we are categorizing milia, we talk about two different types, primary milia and secondary milia. Primary milia come directly from entrapped keratin below the skin's surface, and they most often are associated with a hair follicle. These are the most common type of milia that I see in my own clinical practice, and they're often on the faces of infants, even fresh out of the womb babies and adults. And then we have secondary milia. And in medicine, anytime we say anything is secondary to something else, it means it's due to something else. And in the case of milia, milia are secondary to trauma. So secondary milia are also known as traumatic milia, and they occur or can occur anytime the skin is damaged. Unlike primary milia, which typically are associated with a hair follicle or are attached to a hair follicle, secondary milia actually arise from the eccrine sweat gland. As I mentioned earlier, secondary milia can be due to trauma to the skin. So for example, an aggressive laser or chemical peel can leave milia behind. Also people who are chronic skin rubbers, so people who have allergies, and kind of manipulate the skin around their eye a lot are going to be more prone to forming milia. And then also infections can lead to milia. So herpetic infections and staph infections, especially if they cause blisters, can leave milia behind. There are certain lifestyle factors that can also predispose you to milia. So for example, if you are a smoker, you are more likely to get milia. If you have chronic long-term sun exposure, definitely more likely to get milia. If you use steroids topically for long periods of time, you can be predisposed to milia. And then some people, though not everyone, if they use really thick or occlusive creams, they can be more prone to milia. With all of that being said, we still don't fully understand why some people get milia and some don't. We see it in about 40 to 50% of newborn babies. I know my son had several milia when he was born that just sort of resolved on their own. However, if you get milia as an adult, they are less likely to go away on their own, though some will, and we will talk about that. We see milia on people through all phases of their life. Like I mentioned, it happens on infants. We see it in kids and we see it in adults, especially as you get older, you will become more and more prone to milia. It happens equally in men and in women, but we tend to notice it probably in women more because one, women are the ones that usually are looking in the magnifying mirrors. And two, women tend to have thinner skin. And so anything that's trapped below the skin surface is going to be more visible. Before I get into the treatment of milia, which is probably what you're here for, I do want to talk about the fact that there are so many things that show up on the face that mimic milia, but aren't. One of the most common skin concerns that is mistaken for milia is something called fordyce spots. These are severe glands, also known as oil glands, and they appear as small, like one to two millimeter, white to yellowish bumps. And they're often most visible under the eye, on the lips, and in the genital skin, where the skin tends to be really thin and allows those oil glands to be visible through the skin. Another skin condition that's commonly mistaken for milia is something called syringomas. These are little sweat duct dilations that proliferate under the eyes, and they can look very similar to milia and very similar to fordyce spots. They are small, white to clear to yellow bumps. They can appear in other areas on the face too and even on the neck, but it's probably one of the more common things people come in for asking for milia removal. And then I have to tell them they're syringomas. Honestly, in my practice, I've seen so many things mistaken for milia and I don't blame people. They're not dermatologists. They don't have the same tools in their office to look at these spots very up close to make accurate diagnoses. Sometimes they've never even heard of the alternative diagnoses. So there's something called calcinosis cutis in which you get calcium deposits in the skin that can very much look like milia. You can have skin colored moles that look like milia. You can even have skin cancer 
cancers like basal cell carcinomas that can be mistaken for milia. I mention all of this because we're about to talk about milia treatment. And it's so important that if you're going to do an intervention on your skin, that you are targeting the thing you think you're targeting. So if you have milia on your skin, it's not a bad idea to get a formal diagnosis from a dermatologist if you want to pursue at-home treatment. But as we're about to discuss, probably the best way to have milia treated is in the office. Because milia are due to keratin trapped below the skin's surface, you can't just pop them out. There's no direct connection between the milial cyst and the skin surface. So what we're doing in the office is we are creating an opening in the skin through which that cyst can be extruded. We will often do that with a sterile needle or a scalpel blade. Sometimes we'll even do something called electro desiccation or cautery to essentially use heat to melt the overlying skin or burn the overlying skin to allow that cyst to make its way to the skin surface. But we are doing this all in a sterile manner. I want to make that point because a lot of people are like, hey, can I just like get rid of my milia at home by popping my skin and I do not recommend it. You don't want to manipulate your skin with non-sterile instruments. You also want to make sure that you're treating the right thing. I've had so many patients try to remove their milia and then when they come to the office, that's not what it is. I find that milia removal in the office works best for larger milia. Now all milia by definition are small, but sometimes people will have hundreds of little pinpoint milia and that's not very amenable to in-office treatment. So be mindful of the fact that if you can only see your milia when you have your 10x mirror and you are one inch away from the mirror, you probably shouldn't be messing with them. If no one else can see them and even you can't see them without a magnifying glass, why are you bothering with them? So let's talk a little bit about at-home milia treatment. One, you should know that smaller milia tend to go away on their own with time. That doesn't always happen, but over the course of a few years, especially in kids, they often will completely resolve. And two, the best at-home topical treatment for milia is retinoids. You would think other types of exfoliants like alpha hydroxy acids and beta hydroxy acids might also help with milia, but they haven't shown to be as effective. My number one over-the-counter recommendation for the treatment of milia is Differin gel or Adapalene 0.1% gel. Anecdotally, in speaking with my patients and speaking with my fellow dermatologists, it seems that when you're using these type of topical retinoids, they need to be used consistently for six months and up to a year before you see the improvement. So if you're trying to get rid of milia, just know that it might take some time. If someone comes to see me in my office and they want recommendations for at-home milia treatment, I will often prescribe tretinoin 0.025% or even 0.05% for the treatment of milia at home. So those really are the main treatments of milia. Nothing crazy exciting, either in-office extraction or treatment with topical retinoids at home or a combination of both. I do think it's worthwhile to spend a minute talking about milia prevention because if you've done the time or the effort to remove your milia, you probably don't want to continue to form new ones. Now, as I mentioned before, we don't fully understand why some people get milia and some don't. So you could be in theory doing all of the right things and still be getting milia. And in that case, at least we have some treatments, but also let's see if we can optimize your skincare routine. So one, when you're cleansing your skin, you want to make sure that you're not being too aggressive or abrasive with your skin. Remember, some milia are due to trauma and that can include repeated rubbing. So if you use an abrasive washcloth or you use a lot of physical exfoliants on your skin, that may be the cause of your milia. You guys know I'm a huge fan of the double cleanse. I will often remove my makeup and my sunscreen with some type of micellar water. You know, my favorite is the Bioderma micellar water or a cleansing oil or a cleansing balm. And then I will go in with a second gentle water-based cleanser. Even though the double cleanse can be a little annoying for some people because it's two steps instead of one, I find that by having two gentle cleansing steps, I don't have to tug or rub on my skin as much. The double cleanse combo that I've been reaching for lately is the Hada Labo cleansing oil. I've loved that for quite a while. And then I've been following it up with the Neutrogena Hydro Boost, their new hydrating gel cleanser. Now, the other area where people can sort of exacerbate their milia is when it comes to moisturizers or ointments that they're using to moisturize their skin. And this is very personal to each individual. For example, I can use lanolin and petrolatum on my skin and it doesn't give me milia. But other people, if they were to use Vaseline on their skin or Aquaphor on their skin, they are going to be more prone to forming milia. So unfortunately, this is a little bit of trial and error and really observing your skin after introducing a new product to see if new milia form. If everything seems to be giving you milia, you want to look at the ingredient list and avoid things like dimethicone and petrolatum and lanolin and shea butter and waxes. Now, again, this is not going to cause milia for everyone. And for most people, the vast majority of people, it's going to be totally fine. But if you keep coming up with milia, those might be ingredients worth eliminating in your skincare. My all-time holy grail favorite lightweight moisturizer is the Skin Better Trio Rebalancing Moisture Treatment. 
it's incredibly expensive, but it is such a good lightweight moisturizer. And if you have not been able to tolerate anything else, I think it's worth a go. A lot of my patients also really like the Versed Dew Point Gel Cream Moisturizer. That's another very lightweight one that doesn't have a lot of occlusive agents in it. Okay, that is a wrap on Milia. Of course, if you have additional questions, put it in the comments below. Have you ever had Milia? And if so, how did you get rid of them? Or did you just live with them? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel and I will see you next time.